posted from last night's sermon. Um, if you weren't here and you can see it, it was Mark 25, Mark 5 and 25, excuse me. It says, what to do if nobody cares? Well, um, I hope y'all came ready for tonight. We got some more for you, amen? Amen. With the help of the Lord, we ask you to grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalms. Turn to the book of Psalms. And the chapter is 34. Ask you if you can if you're able to stand for the people of the Lord. The book of Psalms, the chapter is 34, verse number 1. And it reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. I'll say that again. I will bless the Lord at all times. I'll say it a third time. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us all his name together. Yes, I sought the Lord and he heard me That's right. and delivered me from all my fears. I'd like to talk about just for a few brief moments. They should have took me out when they had the chance. <laughs> Saul is trying to kill him 
because David had been found favor in the eyes of the people. Uh, the quote says uh, that David was declared to have 10,000 and Saul only had a thousand. Now, isn't it strange how some folks don't even understand how God can use other folks to make your name great? When people have the wrong agenda and the wrong spirit, they can mishandle, misuse, and misrepresent what God is doing in their lives. And what happens is Saul gets angry with David because of what people were saying. And Saul didn't understand that God had already said his time had come to an end. He was just only holding the position until God got David fully qualified. You know David, don't you? He was the one that God had sent down. He sent Samuel down to anoint him at Jesse's house. And you do understand, David is Jesse's youngest boy. David was the one that was outside in the field, making David the sheep. He was the one killing lions and bears while the other boys was in the house making bread. David was outside with the sheep, amongst the sheep handling the, the fields while everybody else was in the house. And when he showed up to anoint David, he overlooked. So people will miss 
they don't know the value that is in you. If I took a twenty dollar bill, balled it up, threw it on the ground, stepped on it, picked it up, spit on it, and ripped it in half, would you still want it? Yeah, you still want it. Why? But it's still twenty dollars. Let me help some of y'all right quick. That twenty dollars still has value, just like some of us. And I don't care how you've been stepped on. I don't care how you've been spit on. Uh, no matter my condition. 
conviction, uh, he can still get glory out of my life. Yeah. 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 You know, a lot of us have issues when it comes down to God getting the glory. Uh, see, listen, watch this, I'm going to help you. Because a lot of us don't have a problem with receiving the blessings from God. Oh, no, no, no. You know, we quit God bless you. Yeah, my God bless me. But what if God decided to send you through a Job with you? What if he makes you Job's wife? See, a lot of folks talk about Job's wife because she said, curse God and die. But do you understand what she was dealing with? She watched her husband lose all his freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody that was related to him or close to him are telling him, you must be a son to make God a man. Yeah. Everybody pointing the finger at him. And she's the only one left in this corner. And she's saying, look, I'm sick of seeing you suffer. I'm sick of seeing you go through. You got sore on your body. question is, could you handle half? Uh, no, because you can't even handle some. Some of y'all, some of y'all break a fingernail and you ready to quit. Oh, I quit! <laughs> Lord, start messing in your family and you get a fit. God start messing with your money, you get offended. God start allowing something to happen in your life, you all upset. Well, you must then read Psalms 34, verse 19, when it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But don't stop reading, keep on reading. Let me say that again because some of y'all didn't hear me. When you get saved, I don't know who fooled you like he was going to be all peaches and cream. No? I'm telling you right now, soon as you say, I do, I love the Lord, as soon as you make a confession in your heart, you believe Jesus, die for your sins, make them personal say, all oh, hell will break us in your life. Because the devil is now your enemy. When he was on his side, he didn't argue. You don't understand that. Seeing teammates fight each other, no, they ain't more each other, they trying to win the same fight, they trying to win the same game, and so the devil didn't have no problem with you as long as you was with him, his problem came when you switched to the other team, and when you got on the law side, that's when he got upset. Now he's saying, look at him, everything you do, he's standing there talking about, look at him, God, I know you see him, look at him, look at him on that line, look at him on that cheat on the taxi, look at him, look at him, and Jesus said, remember the blood, remember the blood, remember the blood. Remember the blood. Remember the blood. Jesus said, all through the twelve. Remember, I, I, I already paid the price. Let's pay for all the
because I need the devil to understand that even though he knocked me down, baby, you didn't knock me out. No, he didn't. I'm so 